Good morning, Sinai community. Welcome to Maundy Thursday. This is Pastor Annie coming to you live from my dining room table, watching the snow fall yet again. Uh, my wife told me this morning that the blizzard was missing us, but apparently the weather people don't know what's going on. Um, it is pretty, though. It's pretty, like the light, fluffy snowflakes drifting down to the earth to mess up our day. You know, that's how it goes sometimes. Best laid plans. But hopefully the weather holds off so we can worship this evening at 6.30 at Zion Lutheran Church located in Lancaster, Minnesota for Monday Thursday to celebrate First Communion of seven young members of our community. Um, if not, Jesus will still rise on Sunday. That's the, that's the benefit. It's not our job to uh, get Jesus out of the tomb. Um, it's our job to receive the news and proclaim that news wherever we might go. But we're not there yet. This is Monday, Thursday, not Easter. Um, and so this morning I'm trying to just focus in on all the things I have coming up. Worship tonight, worship tomorrow, funeral Saturday, worship Sunday, funeral Monday. Um, it's going to be a haul. And I'm trying to charge my batteries so that way I am fully present and accounted for in all the things coming up. And so I am leaning heavily on my colleagues in ministry for support and just energy because none of us have it. Um, being solo pastor going through Holy Week for the first time ever by myself is nothing like going through Holy Week with a supervising pastor who does most of the work. This is a whole new level of work for me. I'm not I'm not afraid of it, but it is more than I expected, especially having two pillars of our community pass away within a couple days of each other with funerals within a couple days of each other right around Easter it's it's a challenge it's heavy um real heavy but we do have promises we do have words to live into um and these words this morning that i have for you come from the Gospel of John and one of our beloved community members, uh, Ms. Kathy Levenhagen, who is one of the synodically authorized ministers in our synod who helps at Zion with a Z and like Bronson and Mariah in Kennedy. She wrote a devotion for this day, Monday, Thursday, April 14th, 2022. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Monday Thursday is the beginning of the end. We gather with Christians from our communities to all over the world to move through the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Today, we remember Christ's last meal with his disciples as Jesus washed his disciples' feet. In the scripture from John, water is not for washing feet, but for drinking. In case you haven't noticed, Jesus used water in a lot of different ways. But today, we have two people at a well, Jesus and the Samaritan woman. The woman comes to the well when she knows others have fetched their water and left. Jesus asks her for a drink of water, and the woman comments that he has no bucket. Jesus says back to her, I'll give you living water. The woman is surprised by that and wants to know where she can get such water. Jesus, ever patient, explains that the well water will make you thirsty and you will have to return to the well. 
excuse me, again and again. Jesus Smile invites her into a deeper conversation. Jesus looks the woman square in the eye and says to her, those who drink the water that I give will never be thirsty because this water comes from God, the spring of eternal life. The story continues for a bit between Jesus and the woman, and I encourage you to read the whole account. Where was God? In a place others thought God didn't exist. In a place of activity, but not all were welcome. In a place where shame and guilt were forgiven. In a place where the good news brought others to be followers of Jesus. In a place least expected. There is God. Let us pray. Holy and eternal God, we pray in thanksgiving for all the ways your water refreshes us and heals us. Give us courage so when we turn on our water sources, we too are reminded of your love gushing up and giving us eternal life with you. Give us hearts to see all the places you have called us to be your servants. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So, beloved children of God, remember you are recipients of living water. And that water is too good to hoard. Share it. Point people back to the source of the water so that they may drink deeply as well. May God be with you as you journey through these last three days before arriving at Easter. May you have strength and courage to persevere. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you.